we have J. Which, don't worry, we've already seen, but where this is a different J. Sierra, remind me, what was the other J? Uh, was it impulse? Impulse. It was, we had I or J for impulse. This J is <laughs> equal to I over A, so we have both the I and the J in this one. And this is the equation for something called current density. Current density, so it's the current per cross-sectional area. We already have the equation for current. It is, um, walk me through it. What is the equation for current? What are all of these things? John, N? Um, number of charge carriers. Uh, it's, actually, it's not it's the number. No, it's, um, uh, charge carrier density. Charge carrier density multiplied by A? Area, drift velocity, and the charge. The charge on each carrier, charge per carrier. All right, so we have the current, the, which is the charge carrier density multiplied by the cross-sectional area times the drift velocity divided, multiplied by the charge per carrier, now divided by the cross-sectional area. In other words, the current density is just the um, charge carrier density multiplied by the drift velocity multiplied by the charge per carrier. Again, current density. A guy by the name of Georg Ohm in the 1820s, 1830s, discovered that the current density was proportional to the electric field in many materials. Not all materials, but in these materials, he discovered Ohm's law. He discovered the law that says that some of these materials are ohmic, or they follow Ohm's law. So this symbol here, a lowercase sigma, in this particular case stands for conductivity. All right, we know the equation for the electric potential difference in a constant electric field. Mr. P, what's the equation for um, electric potential difference in a constant electric field? Negative. Negative ED. We're actually only gonna talk about the magnitude of the electric potential difference, so I'm just going to set it equal to E times D. In this particular case, rather than using D, we're actually going to talk about the length of the wire, so that's just going to be E times L, because the D is going to be, in this, in this case, the length of the wire. So I can rearrange that, and we can get that the electric field is equal to the electric potential difference divided by the length. In other words, the current density is equal to the conductivity multiplied by the electric potential difference divided by the length. We can rearrange that to get that the electric potential difference is equal to the current density multiplied by the length divided by the conductivity. Well, we know current density is a current per unit area, so the electric potential difference is equal to the current times the length divided by the area multiplied by the conductivity. So let's just pull out the length divided by the area and the conductivity, and that is multiplied by the current. Now this piece right here is the resistance. Generally, we do this rather than in terms of the conductivity, we do it in terms of the resistivity. Luckily, we use a rho because we've never used that one before. Rho stands for resistivity, and that's equal to the inverse of the conductivity. So, in terms of resistivity, then, the electric potential difference is going to be equal to the resistivity times the length per unit area times the current. And this right here is, as I said, called the resistance. So the resistance is equal to the resistivity times the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area of the wire. And therefore, if we define that R as the resistance, we then get the electric potential difference equals the current times the resistance. 
generally the way that you see this. Electric potential difference equals the current times the resistance, and we also have the resistance equals the resistivity times the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area. I want to look at a table. If you could pull out the table on page 837. The table, page 837. There is a table of a bunch of resistivities of materials. Now, I want to highlight the difference between two different things. We have resistance. We have two different equations for it. Electric potential difference equals I times R, and the resistance equals the resistivity times the length per unit area. We have resistivity. Resistivity is rho. And I want to make sure you understand the difference between resistance and resistivity. This is a table of resistivities. Resistivities of different materials. So who can explain the difference between resistivity and resistance? Jenkins. So resistivity <clears throat> is uh, for a certain material and then resistance Hold up. Is it is a material property, right? As you said, it's for specific materials. Material property, like copper, aluminum, gold, etc. etc. Keep going. And then resistance is based on like how long the what, how long the piece is or the shape of it. It's it includes it's, the resistivity, but it also includes the geometry of a specific object. So resistance is object specific. It depends on the geometry of the object and whatever material you're talking about. So you can have a resistance of a particular resistor. And if you have another resistance, it can have a different, if you have another resistor, it can have a different resistance, even if it has the same resistivity. What would make it so that two different resistors that have different resistances have the same resistivity? Shape. Uh, yeah. they, or, or they're made of the same material. So there are all sorts of different ways to do it. My point is that they're made of the same material, but yes, you could do it other ways as well. Okay, so it's just, one of those things that people often confuse the concept of resistance versus resistivity. Uh, dimensions for resistance. Let's bring and we get resistance equals the electric potential difference per uh, current. So what are the dimensions on resistance? Look, volts per amp. It is in volts per amp, and we call a volt per amp, Loki. We had this last year. Resistance, Sarah Jane. In ohms. In ohms. What is the symbol for ohms? Winter. What kind of horseshoe? Uh, no, not an upside down horseshoe. It is, Travis? An unlucky horseshoe. It is upside down. That's why it's unlucky. But I much prefer <laughs> the unlucky horseshoe. It is in terms of ohms. And it's a horseshoe that is upside down because it is unlucky. So we have. The dimensions for resistivity, however, though, though resistivity is equal to, um, if we rearrange resistivity, we'll get it's equal to resistance times area divided by length. So what then are the dimensions for resistivity? Work through it here, Tim. Resistance is in ohms. ohms. Multiplied by area, uh, meter squared square divided by length, meters. meters. So resistivity is in ohm meters. Another thing to be aware of on that table, that table also highlights something called the temperature coefficient. That's because the temperature of a material also determines its resistivity. This is not actually a part of the curriculum for this class. That's why um, I'm not actually going to talk about sections three, four, or five. As far as I'm concerned, it's not, uh, it's not worth our while. It's good for you to have read it, but we're not going to go through and work on the temperature dependence of, resist, of different materials. Just curious, though we should know what happens to the resistivity if you increase the temperature of a material. 
resistivity increases. What material will help you remember that? There's a specific category of materials that will help you to remember that. Superconductors. A superconductor has what resistivity, class? Zero. In order to have a superconductor at this time, what do you need to do to that material, superconducting material? You've got to make it really cold, really cold on the order of like 1 to 20 kelvins or maybe something slightly higher than that. So that's how you can remember, but again, it's not a part of this class. Let's go through and do a simple example. Let's say we're going to set up an electric potential difference of 12 volts for a 25.0 meter aluminum wire with a diameter of the wire equal to 1.00 millimeters. I want to know two things. One, what is the resistance of this wire and what is the current in this wire? First, the resistance of the wire. That's equal to, we have an equation for it, it is the resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. So we need the resistivity off of the table, please. Um, Tyler, what's the resistivity of aluminum? 2.82 times 10 to the negative 8 ohm meters. So we have 2.82 times 10 to the negative 8 multiplied by the length, which is 25 meters, divided by the cross-sectional area. Help me figure out the cross-sectional area, Meg. Uh, would that be... Oh, what's the thing below the length? What's the thing below the length? AL, aluminum. Oh, all right. Um, so it'll be 1.00 times 25. Or you have to convert that to meters. So, uh, point zero zero one. Multiply that by the length. Multiply. To get the area? The cross-sectional area. Hillary, equation for cross-sectional area. Uh, okay. Why? Because if you cut it, it's a circle. It's a circle. Pi r squared. So we have pi <laughs> times the radius of it. Uh, 0. 0.0005. I'll do it like this, but yes, absolutely. So the resistance then is equal to. 0.8. 0.8976, uh, we'll go with, uh, well, we'll actually have three sig figs here. So uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.898 dimensions, please, um, Stacey. Ohms. So this wire is made of aluminum, and aluminum has a resistivity of 2.82 times 10 to the negative 8 ohm meters. This particular wire, because it has a certain length and a certain diameter, is going to have a specific resistance of 0.898 ohms. And we're going to figure out the current in this wire. How are we going to do that match? Um, let's see. Oh, delta V equals IR. Give those to me without any of the letters. Tell me what it stands for. Uh, potential, well, like potential difference equals current times resistance. Good. So the current then is going to be equal to the electric potential difference divided by the resistance. So 12 divided by 0 0.898. Current, I'm sorry, 0 0.8976. Current in the wire, please. 13.4. Oh, uh, sorry, back up. It's a 368. Thank you. Therefore, the current is equal to 13.4, 13.4, Tim? Amps. Amps. Just a basic problem to go through to help us understand this stuff. 